Great. So good afternoon, good evening, good morning from wherever you're doing this. I'm Mannat, a 10th grader studying in Delhi Public School, RK Puram, New Delhi, India. I am an avid public speaker, writer, and an emuner. I am also very enthusiastic about coding and took to coding very early in life. I personally feel that coding and AI could be the tool that could transition and change this world for the better. I'm an enthusiastic environmentalist and have developed various projects in the field of water scarcity, like a decentralized gray water treatment unit for homes to treat wastewater at the source. I think all that I've done till now, the best saying that sums it all up is I am I ha, I'm a jack of all trades, master of none, but better than the master of one. Wow, it seems like you're very well-rounded. Um, and I, actually, I'm also a MUNer too. It, it's quite fun, isn't it? Yeah, it was nice to hear about um, the model in the United Nations you were talking about yesterday. Mm -hmm. So whenever you're ready, you can go ahead with your with what you want to present. Okay, so I have 25 minutes, right? Yeah, around that. I think I believe you have around that time. Okay, so may I share my screen? Go ahead. Okay. okay. Is it visible? Yep. Okay. I can see it. Right. So um, I think I'll get started now. Without any further ado, I'd like to dive into what I'm going to talk about today. Today, I'm going to speak about the decentralization of the wastewater treatment process and about my project, Bilge Vessel, which is a decentralized wastewater treatment unit. Before getting started, I'd like to briefly discuss the ongoing climate crisis and how it is altering patterns of weather and water around the world. I'm sure there's no doubt in anyone's mind that climate change is real. We're already getting a taste of what we'll have to deal with in a few years. According to researchers, we're currently experiencing the sixth mass extinction catastrophe and CO2 emissions began to rise in 1950 and they haven't stopped since the Industrial Revolution. The IPCC recently released its most serious warning to date, and the study portrays a dismal picture. According to the report, climate change is quickly escalating. Many of the consequences will be worse than expected, and some will even be irreparable. A global net zero aim by 2050 is the very minimum expected and required to keep the global warming to 1.5 degrees Celsius. From the problem of climate change also sprouts the problem of intense water scarcity. India and the world is facing acute freshwater shortage, and it is estimated that most countries will have no potable water by 2025. Hence, there's an urgent need to reduce, reuse, and recycle wastewater in whichever way possible. Now, we all are well aware that three-fourths of the Earth is covered with water. Then a natural question that arises in our mind as, is as to why should we worry about conserving it when it is present in abundance? The underlying reason is that only 3% of it is usable of fresh water and the rest 97% is unusable salty water. The cost of treating it is very high and the whole process is very cumbersome. To explain the aforesaid with a different perspective, if you consider the total water available on Earth, equivalent to a bucket full, then only one spoon of it is usable of fresh water. Taking the example of India, the western suburbs of Mumbai, a metropolitan city of India, had no water supply. Chennai was also struggling with the water crisis, and last summer it became the first Indian city to go dry. In fact, Cape Town, South Africa, also experienced an acute water shortage a few years back. The water table in that area had plummeted to dangerously low levels. Because of the excess usage of water and growing demand, the populace endured severe shortage, drought, and government failure. A well-known saying about waste segregation reads that waste is a resource if we segregate it at its source. Source is basically the place where the waste is actually produced. That is our homes. I believe that the same saying applies just as well to wastewater treatment. Wastewater is a resource if we filter and treat it at the source. 
the key word of the essential phrase here is at the source. And that's precisely what my whole talk will be about. Today, in most countries, the wastewater generated in our homes is transported to the sewage treatment plants for treatment. The construction, operation, maintenance of these facilities need substantial financial investments from the government. Not just this, this procedure has various other shortcomings. A lot of energy is required in moving and pumping water from the homes to the SDPs and from the SDPs back to the homes for consumption. The water crisis is exacerbated by the seawit spills and freshwater leaks in the supply network. See, our main objective is to treat wastewater using environmentally friendly, sustainable methods that are economical and do not use energy unnecessarily. In order to make this chain of filtration more cost effective, environment friendly, and to yield better results, we should adopt a decentralized approach of treating and reusing water. That is, having decentralized wastewater systems at individual homes. As it is said, a picture is worth a thousand words. This image does a great job at, con at conveying my idea and concept. So, rather than accumulating all the wastewater from the homes at one particular stop spot, that is the SDPs, we must follow a decentralized or scattered approach of having small, individual, and cluster-type wastewater filtering systems to filter water at a decentralized level. Having said that, it's not necessary to have the system in every house. It's not practically feasible at some times. Maybe a society with around 200 people could have a common filtering system installed in their society. This is also a decentralized approach and would do wonders. Such decentralized systems help communities reach the triple bottom line of sustainability. Good for the environment, good for the people, good for the economy. These are highly cost effective and economical since the construction of large STPs won't be required and there would be a reduction in the operation and maintenance costs. The governments would be able to save significant construction expenditures and could use the additional money for other social causes. In simple words, we would be able to respond to growth while preserving green space. I would like, I, I would, I would like to talk about the case study from Arba Manik, Ethiopia. Arba Minch town of Ethiopia has a total population of about 75,000. About 45.7 liters of grey water is produced daily by every household. So before I go further and talk more about grey water, just a brief idea about what it is. It is the relatively clean wastewater from baths, sinks, washing machines, and other kitchen appliances. So essentially, any wastewater other than toilet waste draining from a household is grey water. A baseline study carried out by Rosa Project in 2007 revealed that 94% of the households discharged the grey water they produce and only 6% used the grey water for gardening and other non-potable end uses. To initiate reuse of grey water, individual household level grey water towers were installed for a community of nine households covering 45 inhabitants. Treated grey water was used grow vegetables in their towers. As, a, as it can be seen in this picture, a gray water tower is a circular bag containing a mixture of ash and compost with a gravel column at the center. Available gray water from the households is connected and poured in these gravel columns. Leafy plants are also planted in the holes cut in the sides of the bag. Another remote rural region of Beka Valley in Lebanon is Tonora, which faces severe water shortage. The only source of fresh water in the area was the spring, which was populated due to sewage contamination. To make optimum use of available water households, households directly reuse grey water from kitchen, laundry, and floor washing multiple times before discharging the water. Grey water treatment project was implemented in this area as well to treat grey water off the households so that it can be reused for irrigation. The grey water treatment kit consists of four plastic barrels lined up and interconnected with PVC pipes. The first barrel is grease, oil, and solid separator. 
where the solid matter from influent gray water settles and the floating components such as grease and soap foam float. In the next two barrels, anaerobic bacteria break down, organic matter present in gray water. The last barrel acts as a storage tank for treated gray water. As soon as it gets filled, an electric pump gets activated, which then delivers this treated water through the drip irrigation network to water the plants. About 20 to 30 trees can be irrigated with gray water produced from families of six to eight members. These attempts by a few countries to set up decentralized wastewater treatment systems have worked really well for communities of any size and demography. However, the design is not compact and not at all aesthetically pleasing, which is the biggest reason for why general public is reluctant to have such systems in their homes. Like any other system, decentralized systems must be properly designed, maintained, and operated to provide optimum benefits and to make the treatment and reuse of water as seamless as possible. I have been working on this aspect for a long time now and have made a decentralized gray water treatment unit named Bilge Vessel and Scupper Valve, which are smart comrade in arms to collect filter and reuse gray water in homes and help fight the water crisis. Before I began working on this project, I conducted a survey to understand awareness, acceptability, and barriers towards gray water reuse at home. This slide shows the inferences from the survey. The survey concluded that space constraints and lack of implementation knowledge were a few of the top barriers in reusing gray water at home. Few respondents also highlighted bad odor and health concerns as reasons for not having a gray water filtering system. I have developed a simple do-it-yourself decentralized gray water treatment unit to address all the above barriers. The proposed system, bilge vessel, can be easily implemented at individual homes with no changes in the existing home plumbing network and takes little space in the bathroom. Now, I know you must be inquisitive about what bilge vessel actually is. So, the name bilge vessel has been derived from the bottommost part of the ship's hull where wastewater is treated. So, the bottommost part of the ship's hull is, all, is also called as a bilge. And since my project is also very closely related to filtering and treating gray water, I took inspiration from that. And vessel is basically a hollow container to hold liquid. This solution has two units scupper valve and bilge vessel. Collecting gray water from the wash basin or washing machine is fairly simple, since we only need to connect its outlet to the bottommost bucket. However, collecting shower water and water from the kitchen is a challenge, which is when the scupper valve comes into picture. The collected water from the washing machine, wash basin, shower water, and kitchen water will be pumped by the scupper valve towards bilge vessel, which will in tune filter the gray water and store the recycled water for non-potable end uses, such as flushing, mopping, irrigation, and cleaning. The scupper valve is a small case-like device which fits into the flow drain trap of a bathroom. The sensors present in this device will pump, this, will pump the soapy and soapy shower water to the bilge vessel. The bilge vessel has three buckets stacked one over the other, and the water from the scupper valve is directed towards the lowermost bucket from where it is further pumped to the topmost bucket. Coming on to the setup for the bottommost bucket, a small submersible pump is placed in the lowermost bucket along with water level controller wires to ensure that the pump gets switched off when the water drops down below a certain minimum level. This protects the submersible pump from burning out. Three holes are drilled near the top edge of the bucket at different levels. The topmost hole acts as the inflow of water and is connected to the outlet of the washing machine or the wash basin's outlet. The second hole is drilled on the opposite side at the same level as the first one. This is the submersible pump outlet is passed through this uh, hole and is connected to the topmost bucket. And the third hole is drilled just below the second hole, which acts as an overflow outlet and is, and is connected to the flow drain trap. After the setup, the bottommost bucket is closed with a lid. The middle bucket has a fairly simple setup. It is placed on top of the bottommost bucket. We have a two-way bib tap, 
to, uh, connected to it. One outlet is connected to the system of WC. The lid of the middle bucket is connected to the top bucket through a PVC pulk head fitting. This connection will help water from flowing from the topmost bucket to the bottommost bucket, to the middle bucket where the treated water is actually stored. A normal PVC pipe is added to the topmost bucket that air can vent out from the middle bucket, hence allowing easy passage of water. The topmost bucket has two inches of fine aggregate, two inches of sand, two inches of activated charcoal, peels of orange, peels of any other fruit could also do wonders here. We have two inches of coarse aggregate and a plant water hyacinth or pistachia. If sa the sand and fine aggregate that are the bottom two layers, they will strain out all the suspended matter, solids and bacteria in the gray water. The sand and fine aggregate will also strain out the suspended matter that's floating as well as sinkable that's trapped within it, reducing and removing most of the bacteria and solids present in the water. The activated charcoal will remove organics that affect the taste, odor, and color of the water. Coarse aggregate will capture all the large particulate matter and impurities like soap, hair, oil, and grease. The wastewater will trickle through these different layers and get filtered. The roots of the pistachia plant will remove metals and other impurities, thus bio-cleaning the water. The treated and cleared water gets stored in the middle part of the bilge vessel, which can be connected to the flushing WC or can be reused for other non-potable end uses, such as flushing, mopping, irrigation, and car washing. The topmost bucket, again, has water level controller's wires, which will switch the pump on and off depending on the level of wastewater in the bucket. The topmost bucket is again closed with a lid. As a better way to organize the filter media and to make the replacement uh, procedure easier, I'm experimenting with stacking the filter media into small containers. These containers will be connected to each other through a network of pipes following the principle of baffle filtration. In this, vertical baffles arranged in series force the wastewater to flow under and over them as it passes through the inlet to the outlet. This would help us in meeting the bacteria barrier highlighted by the survey respondents. That is difficulty in changing filter media from time to time. Instead of emptying the whole stack in layers, the user would only have to detach a particular container from the network and replace the filter media, which is a fairly simple task. I am working very closely with the end user and I'm trying to get as much feedback as possible from them so that the design I make is actually acceptable by the uh, society and they're actually welcome to have such a system installed in their homes because I've seen a lot of reluctancy from the people for having such a system in their homes. Coming on to some of its features, the system is compact. As one of the barriers that came out of the survey was lack of space for installing a wastewater system, I adopted a vertical stack design inspired by Khamba composting. Due to its vertical stack design, it takes less floor space, equivalent to a space taken by a water bucket. Hence, it can fit in a small corner of a toilet and would not take up a large space. <laughs> Natural materials that are used, like coarse aggregate, fine aggregate, sand, activated carbon, and peels of orange, are sustainable in nature and last for a longer time period. The components used in this project are all low cost materials that are easily available in the local market. Materials like coarse aggregate, fine aggregate, sand could be easily found in, the, uh, in construction sites. This table shows the quantity and the cost of the materials that are used in, uh, for this project. As you can see, the whole setup just cost me around 1000 rupees. A family of four can easily recover the money in a year through savings in their water bill. This project is also modular and scalable, and its design can be expanded. One can add more buckets if there's a need to store and recycle additional water to meet the demand. It can be easily scaled at society, city, state, and country level, as it requires no changes in the existing home plumbing network. This setup can also be designed innovatively to match the bathroom interiors, as it can be seen in this image. Lastly, it is also highly smart because it has an Arduino Uno, which switches the pump on and off depending on the water level. 
This would help to control the water level in the topmost and the bottommost bucket and switching on and off of the pump without any human intervention. That means the user won't have to do any extra work for operating or having such a system in their homes because the whole system is automated. The user can also see the amount of water saved on a daily basis, daily, monthly, and an annual basis, in fact. Coming on to the last topic about impact that this solution will, can, uh, will make at the end user. So I have the system deployed at my home right now. So we are saving 100 liters of portable water. And at the same time, we're generating 100 liters of less wastewater. So with an initial investment of about rupees 1,000, a family of four can save around 4,000 to 5,000 liters of precious water per month. Just for some calculations, 100 liters of water costs around rupees 20 to 30, which results in saving rupees 100 per month. That is rupees 1,200 per year. A household can recover the money in a year through savings in their water bill. Coming on to portable water savings, if 20% homes, if only 20% homes in Delhi adopt this and considering 100 liter savings per day, then Delhi can save 58.15 MLD of fresh water per day. This will also result in saving pumping energy as the construction, as the municipal corporation won't have to pump, will have to pump, uh, will essentially have to pump less water because there won't be any demand. Finally, coming to the infrastructure, operation, and maintenance savings. Since we are saving water, that means we're generating less wastewater and sewage. So the municipality has to create less capacity of infrastructure. That is the sewage treatment plants to treat the wastewater and sewage. Just to put the picture in perspective, the capacity of Pampa Kalan sewage treatment plant is equivalent to water treated and reused by the bilge vessel if 20% homes in Delhi adopt it. The STP construction costs around rupees one per liter and the operation cost is around rupees one lakh per day. So the government can save 5.6 crores by avoiding the construction of the sewage treatment plant and 3.6 crores annually towards the operation cost of the sewage treatment plant. As a conclusion, I tested the filtered water for pH and turbidity which confirmed that the water is fit enough for non-portable for non -portable end uses like flushing and irrigation. You can see in the image the drastic improvement in the appearance, color, and odor of the filtered water compared to the gray water. Also, since the input is shower, shower water, washing machine water, and hand wash water, there is not much issue of bad odor. The proposed solution is able to address the barriers highlighted by the survey respondents such as space constraints, bad odor, and lack of available solutions. As an extra step, I also studied the environmental and economic impact of this solution at individual household and municipal and city level, and found that a family can recycle and reuse 50% of their water demand through this system, resulting in less input or load on fresh water, and at the same time, less output of sewage. This leads to savings and has an impact not only at household levels, but in the whole water supply network system. That is desalination, energy in moving water, leakage of fresh water in the supply network, spillage of sewage, treatment of sewage, and other running costs. This is a small this effort from my end to save our best friend water. I really think that if we all make modest efforts, we can all prevent the depletion of this priceless resource and give our new generation a peaceful life without water scarcity. I hope to see the solution in every house in the near future and make the whole treatment process decentralized. These are a few areas I'm currently working on right now. And this brings me to the end of my presentation and I'm open to any questions you all may have. Almost well done, Manat. I'm really impressed. Uh, Busha, uh, I have a question. May I? Or you people have some? Sure. Yeah, um, Manak, the only thing I want to know besides the great presentation, the way you presented it, and actually the purpose behind it, uh, what are the biggest challenges that you think uh, you might have like come across or that you think uh, might can be um, while for to, to implement these? Although you have mentioned a lot of 
benefits of it, but what are the biggest challenges that you think still these the solutions like these are not implemented, especially yours, for example? Right. So um, after doing the survey and after reading all about um, decentralized clay water treatment units, I found out that there's no lack of solutions for this problem. Yeah. However, the major problem that we are facing right now is acceptability from the common man. There's nobody who is willing to have such a system in their homes just because it maybe takes up extra space or it, or it has bad odor or maybe because of health concerns. So this convincing people to have such a system in their homes was the biggest problem I have ever faced till now. So this, so in order to meet that and, on, and in order to solve it, I am working and reiterating on the design as much as possible so that I make it as economically friendly, as easy, to, as easy to set up and as automated that there's no extra effort required from the user, like from us, like people who are using this at their homes, there's no extra effort required from their end. Secondly- uh, And uh, what about the order and the health that you mentioned, although we have left with only one minute, but I just want right. to like present you this half. Right. So for the time being, since I'm dealing with only gray water, and as I mentioned, the sources that I'm taking gray water from are shower water, uh, uh, shower water, wash basin water, and washing yeah. machine water. They don't particularly have a bad odor. They do have soaps and all with it. However, I tested with it and I deployed this in a few uh, society, in a few people's houses near my society. So there wasn't much uh, problem of bad odor there. So yeah, that wasn't a big problem. However, they surely said that replacing the filter media after about six months, since this, since the uh, filter media started to decay after that time, was a huge problem. So that is one place I'm currently working on, and I'm trying to make it. I'm trying to follow the principle of baffle filtration yeah. to make the uh, replacement of filter media a little easier because uh, the filter media is bound to decay after six months. I can't do anything about it. What I can only do is to make the re re replacement process of this easier. And all that's right, what I'm focusing thank on. Thank you right very now. much for sharing this all with us. And uh, we wish you, gift wishes you very best of luck. And do come back thank and you. let us know that how much have you been able to implement this and how much, how would you actually fight this mindset issue <laughs> along right. with the, 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 the technical issues of the product itself? Because sometimes we do have the best of the products in fact for uh, saving water and all that. And we are not using those. So do work right. on the mindset issues and get back to gift the next time and let us know how did you solve it. For right, so I am problems. actually, I have actually taken a step forward. So I have the system installed in a few people's, a few people's houses in my locality. Meanwhile, uh, Busha, would yeah. you like to just uh, pr promote our next panelist, our next presenter as well? Manak, yeah. we would have loved to hear from you a lot more, right. but the, we have a next panel presenter over here and I wish you and gift wishes you the very best of that.